In this video, I will share an important tip that can help you avoid a quite confusing issue in your Compose Navigation logic. That issue is related to the pop-backs type function of a nav controller. Many of you are already using that function to navigate back to the previous screen in the back stack. So here is one simple example. We have two screens, Home and Details. When we click the Home screen, we are navigating to the Details screen. And when we click the back arrow from the Details screen, then we are triggering a pop back stack function and navigating back to the Home screen. Quite simple. But if we accidentally click the back arrow twice, then the pop back stack function will also trigger twice, and we are gonna pop off uh, both of those screens from the back stack, which uh, would eventually result in a blank screen in our application. This can actually happen more than you think, and that's all because of the transition animations. So by default, a Compose Navigation library uses a fade in and out animations to transition between screens. When we click the back arrow in this example, our screen will be immediately popped off from the back stack, but that arrow will not disappear right away. So this opens the door for the user to click on that arrow multiple times, which can easily cause an unexpected behavior. So now we come to the question, how can we fix that? Luckily, very easy. Before we call pop back stack function, we do need to check for the current back stack entry's lifecycle state. And only if that state is equal to resumed, only then we can trigger this logic. Because the resumed state means that our current screen is in the foreground and it's actively interacting with the user. Otherwise, if that's not the case, then we don't call this function at all. Which means, once we trigger the pop-back stack function, the state will not be equal to resumed anymore. And we can now click on that back arrow multiple times without any issues. If you need to use this logic uh, quite often, I recommend creating an extension property instead. That way, our code can look uh, even more cleaner. What do you think about that? Have you experienced this issue before? Do you have another solution for this little problem? Be sure to comment down below and let me know. Other than that, don't forget to like this video if you want to see some more helpful tips in the future. Thank you for watching.